Hello and good morning to the Retail Corner podcast. I am Paul and I'm here with James Stark. He is a uh, a storied uh, individual within within asset protection. He's been with Neiman Marcus. He's been with Saks Fifth Avenue, Pier One. He's been at all the places you want to steal from. So, uh, <laughs> James, you're with Access Communications right now. What led you to Access Communications? Yeah, well, Cole, thanks for having me this morning. I really appreciate you taking time to uh, go through this retail story um, and answer some very relevant questions for the industry. Um, as you can tell, um, 30 years of uh, asset protection, loss prevention experience, I'm pretty passionate about retail, you know, sure. so, uh, and, and helping, you know, my peers in the industry. So I, with Access Communications, they actually helped us, you know, I, I met them in New Orleans at the National Retail Federation uh, Protect Show. Uh, for Good the place first to meet time. people. Yeah, so several years ago, um, and I was with Neiman Marcus at the time. I was a senior manager, um, and technology was starting to fall into our our laps in our arena because I had sure. all of our distribution and supply chain networks. But also within that, Neiman Marcus Group Services I had the data centers, so we worked with IT a lot, and so we were. We were in a in a situation where we knew we had to get off of analog cameras and onto IP and developing that migration strategy and path. So access was a very integral part of that in my early days with myself and my counterpart um, as we developed our story and our path for Neiman's. Um, and then as that story continued to grow and we began to migrate, you know, start a migration path, access started uh, a leadership forum called the Access Retail Leadership Forum. And so we became part of that. We attended the very first one. It's a very interactive. It's not any, it's more about thought leadership in the industry, uh, very little about access, but again, it brings people together. So therefore, you know, I just, we kept continuing to attend in, in about, you know, two or three years in, uh, we were asked to be part of the, the retail advisory board. So then we were able to help build build and and been content that was relative to the industry right and okay. and we we went from how to work with system integrators to now okay internally how do we work with our IT partners to help them understand this whole conversion and journey that we're trying to set our organizations on and then ultimately now it's, it's what are we talking about that's relevant to the industry and and practitioners are presenting at these forums and so I presented several times at the forum so that's how I got close to Axis. Um, so yeah. then, you know, when I was with Pier 1, and unfortunately, Pier 1 fell victim to COVID. Um, and so, you know, I was doing some consulting and, and working with an integration partner. And then this position came available, the retail segment leader for the Americas. And so, you know, had a conversation and lo and behold, here I am today. It's, and it's, it's, it's how it works. It's, it's absolutely. About, uh, it's about those connections and everything else that making making sure that you're in the right place kind of thing. Certainly. Um, excellent. So uh, uh, today we're going to kind of talk about the evolution of retail crime because you've got a, a pretty good history and I've got a, not as great a history bit in it, but a, uh, I've still got about 20 years in, in, L, in law. Uh, I'm sorry, not loss prevention, asset protection. And so a, uh, um, just kind of as the evolution of it all. And and I, I feel like we're at another kind of paradigm shift in a, uh, in especially use of technology because right. i mean back in the day asset protection and and, and it it wasn't even different languages it, it was different planets it was 100 you know? and so and the first, the first other, answer was, was no we're not putting cameras on the network <laughs> exactly 100 percent. yes they said, you, they said would you like registers or cameras and they're like exactly. well okay yeah. yeah so um and, and so at, at, with that evolution, like with, with that thought process in the back of our heads, mm -hmm. um, what are what are some of the trends that you're seeing right now on a, uh, as uh, within that paradigm shift? I know I know that we're starting to use camera systems. We're trying to use physical security systems as more than their their ancient purpose, I guess, their, their old right. purpose. So where where are we seeing that going? Yeah. So I think there's a couple of things that you have to remember. So with you you look at the old days of 720 1080p and you know there's still some relevance in the market for some for mm -hmm. some cameras and those models i, I remember that. focusing lenses yeah yeah all the verifocal <laughs> lenses and doing all yeah. that absolutely so you know i think there the paradigm shift is details matter now 
like more than ever, um, yeah. especially when you're dealing with large scale groups or different types of scenarios that retailers are dealing with today. So the image quality comes into play. Uh, I would say also the ability to process data on the edge and not have to bring it back to a server. So with us, our chipsets, we're mm -hmm. able to process intelligent data and really, you, you know, Cole, it's about what we call metadata. So metadata is what what you and I see, right? So I see James has on a blue shirt, he has on headphones. It's, that's what our minds process. Well, video sees all that. And metadata is that process by which it feeds analytics and, and does different things from the camera, from what we say, from the edge to either the cloud or to a local server or what have you. So those are sure. the types of evolutions that are have really taken hold. And, and it really empowers the end user or end customer to, to put together their own journey, if you will, you know, and how they fit into the ecosystem of technology. Okay. So. Now, uh, are, are you guys seeing any sort of use of uh, use of AI, use of uh, uh, cameras as, as a monitoring system kind of thing? A absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, and this is where that whole IT comes into play. But the other thing is once, so like we were just at NRF Big Show, I'll give you an example, <clears throat> love, a much love, larger yeah. show, very beyond security focus, more about business and, and AI and all these things. So when you get a CIO or you get a senior vice president in IT or maybe a marketing or merchant or, you know, someone within store operations goes to these shows and they say, we can do all this with a camera. So the thought is, OK, can we do this with our cameras right now? So right. those are the things is it, it you start to begin to develop your narrative, multi-use, multi-purpose cameras, right? So you can do more with just, it's not just your traditional security anymore, right? So you can, you can now, you know, in some instances, depending on cameras, I mean, and in, in it's really about location and view and how you're setting it up. But I mean, you can do all types of, you know, traffic monitoring, get very targeted with who's in, in certain areas and what those interactions look like. In some cases, you're doing shelf checking. So you're doing your inventory management. All the while, you still have a security component. And oh, by the way, if you have concerns, you know, there are ways to, you know, um, do some some taking folks out of images um, and, and really trying to get that whole visualization to where it's just what's going on to protect, you know, you can blur out a person, they can become a purple blob, those types of things. Yeah, I mean, if, I mean, if the organization is concerned about that type of stuff, right? So privacy there's still concerns a security component are huge. Yeah. Yeah. OK, that, that's kind of cool. So you mentioned large scale as well as is, are you mentioning like is that ORC? Is that is that single uh, single activity where it's like a like a mob type uh, type situation right. or is I mean, how, how are we dealing with that? Yeah. So from a large scale perspective, you know, when you have those everything that shows up on television today, when you have those large scale uh, sure. groups come in, they strategically place, you know, they monitor social media. So, you know, they'll be out there on social media and they're putting groups together. Hey, meet here. And they use code words and things of that nature. And then the other thing is, you know, they have communities. You know, there's a TikTok community. There's a Reddit community. There's all these communities that they talk back and forth. And so retailers are starting to watch those as well. Um, you know, because it helps them gain intel. Um, and so you try to crack that code. But the reality is when these large groups come in, yes, they they work very fast. And in some cases, they're very violent, you know, using bear spray or, or threatening people with that they have a weapon or pushing people out of the way. And, you know, that's a traumatic experience, you know, as an as a loss prevention agent and, and an AP investigator, you know, chasing shoplifters back in my younger days, we're trained and we're prepared for that. That's our job. But if you're thinking yeah. about the hourly associate, if you're thinking about the manager, the customer, that's kind of a traumatic, oh my God, what's going on situation, right? And so we try to take care of it and get it out. But when you come in with a large group like that, it's hard to even engage. And it's, some retailers are even saying, hey, just let it happen. We'll deal with it. So the forensic okay. side of that becomes very right. important and details become very important. Of how much data did you collect? Right, I've I've had I've heard it attacked by, like you can't, you can't what what direction you go to to prevent something like that, and so, um, with a uh, uh, with like staff training and prevention, like you were talking about, because because 
yeah, your your asset protection people, they have a second level of training. They have a second level of safety mindedness right. that uh, about them. And so, but the person that, that you just hired, how do, how do you bring them into that culture? How do you, uh, how do you help them to know what to do, how to respond to these kind of stuff? Yeah. So there's a lot of conversation going on. So traditionally in, in, in the retail environment, we would tell our sales associates, do not get involved. We don't want you touching them. We don't want you just, sure. just observe, right? We need you to observe and remember as much as you can when this type of stuff happens. And, and if you were, then, you know, there was disciplinary action behind it, you know, for that associate because sure. it's in the policy. Do not do this. There's some retailers that are now revisiting that because the, the retail associate, remember these stores are in their communities. These stores right. are their lifeblood to their community. And so they it's becoming very personal for the selling staff because it's it's repeat offenders. These things happen and they're just frustrated. And then they get to a point where, well, I'm just going to do something about it, you know. And so right. that's where you get to that point. So there's a real hard look right now with AP and human resources and associate relations and even legal as to what this all looks like and how do we manage through this process? Because it is a boiling point, right? I mean, it, it, there's some there's some retail folks, especially in these smaller community shops, they're just fed up. Absolutely, absolutely. I, uh, I'm not I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but uh, I used to work for a company that sold CDs. Okay. And <laughs> and we would have a guy that would come in, stack up CDs all the way to his, from his, uh, basically as many as he could hold underneath his chin, take out a Bowie knife and just walk out the door. Right. And so it's, it's tough to train a, uh, an associate for something like that. And, right. and we're like, yeah, it's, <laughs> you're worth may, way more than what he's taken out the door. A hundred percent. And that's what we used to our associates say, look, we can replace merchandise. We can't replace you. My goal is an, a, an executive and a, a asset protection leader. When I got into those leadership roles was to ensure that my associates went home the same way they came to work to their families. Mm -hmm. Right. And they came in, they earned an honest living and then they were able to go back home and, you know, do their family thing. So that's, that's pretty important, you know, as all these executive leaders of loss prevention assets, Asset protection out there that's top of mind every day absolutely absolutely and so you, you talk about going home safely and everything else like that where it's yeah uh, are you seeing uh are, are you seeing camera systems being used for uh, any sort of like risk management type stuff sure yeah so you 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 kind of look at what is risk management so is it slip trips and falls you know the the normal safety stuff um, yeah. and, and the answer is yes, there are analytic companies, third-party analytic companies that do that. Then you talk about like OSHA regulatory funds. So like blocked exits, blocked highways. So at Axis, you know, I worked with Axis back in, in, in my practitioner days to develop a fire exit, blocked exit analytic that resided on the camera. And yeah. so when it detected boxes stacked up, because that's not safe, that's risk management. Now OSHA can find you, you know, the fire department can come in and close your store. So there's a lot bad of bad things could happen. Yeah. Yeah. And it happens. Right. So now the analytic looks and says, hey, talk to the speaker. The speaker says uh, you're in violation. Please remove the objects from in front of the door. OK, so there's that part just inside the four walls. It could be aisleways, right. fire extinguisher, electrical panels, whatever the case may be. As long as your camera can see it and you can and identify a field of interest, you can do this. Then you get on the outside of your building and you think about is someone lying in wait, you know, and it's nine yeah. o'clock and the store is closing. So you develop you, you draw areas of interest. So now we can do actual object analytics, right? We can define what a human is, a car is in an area of interest, and we can know how long it's dwelled there. And, oh, if someone's not supposed to be in this area for more than a minute, maybe 30 seconds, then it creates an alert. It might trigger the lights to go on. It might trigger a horn strobe to go off and flash to let people know and deter. So we're detecting the individual, we're detecting the situation, and then we're deterring any bad actor or red actor, as the Loss Prevention Research Council calls them, you know, is get, you know, to, to sh essentially shoo them away, right? So that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. So, and so that's kind of helping the perception. So like <laughs> the perception overall is that sometimes retail targets are kind of, kind of the soft target. You know, Absolutely. and so, and some, some more than others. And, right. and I, I used to talk to, talked about, uh, uh, about the people that worked with me. And I said, listen, we're not trying to stop all the crime in the world. That's right. not, that's not what we do. We're trying right. to stop crime here at 
X company. I'm not going to mention my former companies, but here at X company. But if that just means that it's it's making it harder to take from our company than somewhere else. And so how do you change that perception? What do you think? Like, what are we using today? Because I know what we used back then, but what are we using today to change that perception? Yeah. So I think we've adopted a little ideology from the e-com space. And because I've worked and been over e-commerce fraud mitigation, I, I understand it's a layered approach. You have to have a tiered layered approach to security now and and what you're doing. You can't allow things to get into the store or what we call it at bang in the incident when you could have Mm -hmm. taken some of those zones of influence and really try to impact or get psychologically create barriers for an individual that may have bad intentions when they walk into your store. It's like when you walk into a store and you see a, a public view monitor and you look up at it and all of a sudden a bounding box comes around. And we're not <laughs> doing like, oh, anything. Man. Yeah, we're not doing anything other than putting, you know, putting a bounding box. Some people may be doing more analytics on it, but the reality is through the camera, we can put a bounding box because we detect, we say, oh, that's a person's face. So think about that in a, not, you know, look, obviously the professionals, the flash mobbers, those five folks, they don't, that, they're going to blow right through that. But the casual everyday shoplifter, mm, or you put some of that stuff in an area of interest, like, you know, uh, a high theft area or some place where you need to make sure you stay in stock. Yeah. And you, it does two things. Number one, it deters theft. And number two, it increases your customer experience. And, and get customer service notified that, hey, we need a, a salesperson because someone's been over here for a while. Right. And so you, you actually mentioned e-commerce. How is, how is e-commerce fitting into a, uh, like the physical security piece now? Yeah. So, you know, from my background, there were really two different silos, but you can learn, right? You learn sure. from both, right? So you can be much more agile with your strategy in e-commerce. And, and be more targeted because of the data that you do collect when you're shopping on a website. You know, the, the raw HTML, it tells you a lot about where people are coming from, how did they get to you. So you build that into your decision model, your fraud model that you're using with your third party. And then there's also services that you can bolt in. So you build a custom strategy. And as the anomaly happens, or the bad actors come in because they'll always find a way to infiltrate, right? Sure. You can learn real quick and then you see what you need to adjust your model and then you block it. And so, and that's a hard block, right? And so you, as we used to say, you try not to get the dolphins caught in a tuna net, right? So you, you want to you, <laughs> okay. you filter through the good people and stop as many of the bad people as you can. That and so sense. from that perspective, yeah. you know, the e-commerce world is much more agile. Whereas, you know, you may not see an immediate change in the physical space as you do in the in the e-commerce space. Because you can you can see how many people you blocked. You can see how many bad actors are attempts. Oh yeah, and it's and it's, it's, ROI, something, right? it's something new every day. Like oh every wow, day. I, that's right. Because I mean we're we're just sitting and we're we're thinking, okay, which one wait, okay, I I came up with these three things today that we we need to block and do. Right. And there's a million people out there <laughs> thinking, right. okay, here's my three things. And so <laughs> Right. Yeah. But you can show an immediate uh, ROI on that, right? Because you can go Absolutely. to your executives and say, here it is. But in the physical space, any anything you put into the environment, number one, you have to be conscious of your customer experience, right? And I think in today's times, customers are really understanding why retailers are having to take some of the extreme measures that they're taking. Sure. A, because they want to stay in stock and B, because the customer wants you to be in stock, you know? Um, and That's so the whole reason they're there. Yeah. That's right. They they walk through the door because you had something they wanted. It's commerce, right? So, um, <laughs> but really, but you don't see or you don't get that immediacy that you do in e-commerce uh, with some of those tactics. You just can yeah. see, oh, I've either got an increase in sales or I'm doing my cycle counts. And now I can see, you know, we have the product in stock and it's selling through a little bit better and we can work on other strategies. But, you know, until you do your inventory shortage and you do all your financial analysis, you know, all that Mm -hmm. shakes out in the wash later on. Right. And and quite frankly, you you might not see the result for a year. Yeah. I mean, there's there's still companies out there that uh, that don't know something's missing until that annual cycle count or whatever that that quarterly cycle count. And and having a little bit more real time data is not only better for. Yeah 
better for asset protection, but better for sales. Because if somebody's coming in, if something's worth stealing, it's probably worth selling. And right. So, right. Yeah. And, and so let's let's, let's uh, let me let me ask you a kind of a theoretical question here. So, okay. I'm a, I'm a small business, limited budget. Right. You know, I'm I'm not a uh, uh, you know maybe one or two franchises. Maybe maybe it's just me. Yeah, uh, what tools am I using to enhance that perception to an, uh, my overall security posture? To say what what am I yeah. using for that? That that's a great question because it is a struggle, right? And so right. I, I think there's a couple of things. Number one, you know, like for example, at Axis, we we have we committed to putting in our deep learning chips in our entire product line now. So it used to be a P series or a Q series, which is one some of our next tier. But now our M series, which is more of a, a consumer, you know, a more affordable line, as they call it, um, you know, for that small shop, you know, because we want yeah. to create levels where we can we can move in with everybody. And maybe it's, hey, I'm going to do some M series cameras, but I really like that P series because I can get more coverage through multi-sensor technology. And so you, we help build that strategy. So you know your budget, you know what you can do. So we work with you to build that custom solution. So, and, and our ability to run our own access object analytics on the edge, through licensing, now it's it's all that is on the camera. And so I don't have to go purchase a server to run a GPU to run a third party analytic in some cases. <laughs> so we can get to that smaller scale. And you even look at like, you know, license plate verification stuff, you know, so we have partners in that arena that we work with, but we can also do that within our video management server, you know, or our okay. services. And, and, and we can do license plate grabs. We can do smart searches. So I can say, hey, show me everybody in a blue shirt or a red shirt or a black shirt. And it brings yeah. them all through and you say, OK, I need that's my person. Boom. So we get you, you know, we close that gap between incident and response that way, even for a small scale retailer. And so we and also all, we and, enable like POS, yeah. you know, you leverage that POS data. You do all this so you can now better understand from a business perspective what's going on. And all that is managed cloud-wise? Not always. No, really? I mean, our thing is, look, we can meet you on-prem, a hybrid situation where you have an on-prem or cloud, or we can connect you to the cloud service that you're working with, right? And so the other thing is we can parse out and separate video streams and, oh, and wow. dial okay. those video streams at, at different levels. But also remember what I talked about metadata. Metadata is not that Mac truck of video, as our IT friends used to call <laughs> yeah. it in the old days, coming down the pipe. Metadata is very thin and flat, and it runs quickly, right? So we're giving you the intelligence behind the video image. That makes sense. That's that's a good thing. And so, uh, uh, anything on the uh, anything on the physical side, uh, like non camera side, that a uh, that a small business should be doing. Yeah, I mean, you can look at a couple of things, you know, uh, you know, when we were at Neiman Marcus in Saks Fifth Avenue and you see it in other regions, uh, high value stuff or value stuff, you can cable them. There's different types of tracking devices that you can put in your in your in your product now. You know, if you're selling some kind of box product, okay. uh, there's some small like piezoid alerting devices that if something's lifted, you look at you go into an Apple store and you yank that thing off, it's going to set off an alarm. So there's different smaller things like that that can have a significant impact in your environment. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a cumbersome experience for the for the end customer, but they understand why. And so but what yeah. it does do is it prompts associate engagement. So now maybe it's it's an opportunity not just to sell you this jacket that you're looking at, but hey, have you seen this scarf? Have you seen these pair of gloves? This would go great together. Or, you know, it gives that salesperson the opportunity to actually sell and you you force the engagement. All right. S sales sales are, are the other side of the coin of that asset protection. You know, it's it's they've got to work Absolutely. together. Absolutely. So and so we're we're running a little low on time. So I just want to ask you one more question. If okay. given your uh, given your story career and uh, I'm sure looking back it's a straight line, but going through it, it was a, uh, a squiggle to, to yeah. say the least. And so if you were just starting out what advice would you give yourself? What advice would you give somebody that's that's wanting to be where you are in a, in a few years? Yeah, I would say chase your future self. 
have what do you where do you want to be in five years and you know what I'll be honest with you, Cole, when when my one of my mentors told me that don't think about I was an investigator and he said, where do you want to be in five years? I thought I want to be a loss prevention manager. And so but once I became a loss prevention manager, then it became, well, I think I can be a director, you know, and so then you you start to build your story and don't be afraid to jump in. Work with executives. Listen, if you will listen in those executive meetings, you glean so much information that can help you better your career and adjust how you are. Have mentors, take what you like and build your own story and do not be afraid. Always stay hungry and do not be afraid. Whew. I think that's a that's a perfect uh, uh, perfect bit of advice. Per so hey. Mr. Stark, I, I appreciate you being on the retail corner with us. Hey, uh, Thank you, Bill. And yeah, you're welcome back anytime. Maybe we'll catch up in a few months to kind of see uh, see how the world changes because it's yeah. it's going to change that fast. So absolutely, look forward to it, Cole. Awesome. All right, folks, hey, uh, go ahead and uh, join us on our next episode of the Retail Corner Podcast. Thanks. Thank you. If you would like to be featured on our podcast, please email us at podcast at retailcorner.live or visit our website, retailcorner.live. Looking forward to having you as our guest on our podcast. And thank you so much for listening.